Let's talk today about the fear of death and how it might be holding you back. Now, one of the biggest reasons we have trouble letting go of things is not necessarily because we are sentimental. It's actually a lot deeper than that. Now, this topic is super, super important. So you've got to stick around to the end because I'm going to dive into something really deep. Now, I promise it won't be scary and it won't be depressing. Hey, I'm Robin. This might get a little crazy, but grab your tea and let's go. Now, letting go of the past is a challenge for so, so many people, probably most people. When I found out that my dad had passed away, I was obviously upset. Now, one of the things that bothered me, aside from the total tragic loss, but it was also how he had not prioritized his happiness the way that I feel he should have. And I think he even knew that that's how I felt. Well, I know he did because we talked about it. I'll get more into that in a second, but I want to explore with you the topic of the fear of death and how it relates to how you live your life and what you surround yourself with. It's such an important topic. Now I have talked about this, the Swedish death cleaning before, and one of the actual topics, the actual deep down meaning cannot be overstated just how important it is. Now, Margareta Magnusson's book, Dostating, Swedish Death Cleaning, she describes three instincts. The clutter instinct, wanting your things surrounding you, the hoarding instinct where you keep things just in case and it helps you feel secure and the fear of death instinct. I myself relate to this one most of all. Even now more than ever, I would say it's complex and as they all are, but I really want to really deep dive into this one today because I think it is such an important topic. I think the fear of death instinct is ever present knowledge and awareness that time is fleeting, moving constantly, and that life is finite. We all deal with this in one way or another. Now, as an emergency nurse, I have seen so many lives end early, way too early. And I've also seen something that is equally as tragic, and that is people not recognizing how important life is and how they should live it to the fullest. I've actually seen lifestyle choices that have prevented people from walking across the room. And that is why I run on my treadmill. And it's just because I can't. And if you can't, I'm not saying you should, and I'm not saying everybody should, and I recognize everybody comes from a different place. What I am saying is that we need to harness and live life while we can. Now, if you can change something to make your life better, I want you to do it. Okay, so the fear of death instinct with clutter is so, so interesting. I see this one as a huge reason why so many people keep sentimental things. It's like admitting that we aren't going to be here forever. And it's almost like refusing to move on. You're almost like holding yourself hostage in the past. You're not letting go of things from your kids, maybe when they were little, Maybe you're kind of refusing to believe that they're growing up, that time is going on. If you keep those little pants, maybe you're in a way feeling like you're like keeping them forever. Like obviously, you know, you're not keeping them little, but even if you don't think this on a conscious level, you might be thinking it subconsciously. It's also a deep, deep visceral feeling when we let certain things we are attached to go. We are deeply attached to our children, our parents, or even certain stages of life. I had this adorable little Superman outfit that I bought my middle son when he was a baby. Now, because we lived where it was windy and chilly, he only had a chance to wear it once or twice. I held onto it forever. I'm not saying you need to get rid of absolutely everything, but I didn't really need to hang on to this. He didn't really wear it much. It wasn't like it was something super sentimental as far as he goes. What I am saying is you need to be selective about what you keep. I have kept a few items from my kids past and from my past, and I will be keeping a few things from my dad's past, but deciding to let an item go, it might just represent the end of a season, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but denial is not just a river in Egypt. So one example of the fear of death that a lot of people don't recognize is it can be something as simple as keeping something from your kids. So like, for example, my kids, I had this, these lunch boxes for them and like they're these this one is actually like kind of old like my oldest they're molded they were great because I thought it was like perfect 
you know, you just throw the food in them. They're watertight, or they were, and they would hold all sorts of things. There was like less waste. It was so easy. You could just throw them in the dishwasher. I thought like they were perfect. However, the problem is um, the kids, they've grown out of them. And so if I wanted to be like, hey, my kids, this is their lunch box. I'm gonna hang on to it. They're not fully grown. The thing is, they're out of that stage of life. They don't want these lunch boxes anymore. They want lunch bags, just like a paper bag. I can't try to keep them in that time forever. And I can't try to keep myself in that time forever. The fear of death would be like, I'm not letting that go. Or exercising that instinct would be, I'm not letting that go. By deciding, hey, I'm going to donate these, some other parent can enjoy these lunch boxes, then that is so, so much better. And that is like recognizing, hey, time moves, other great things will be coming. Some people, like my dear dad, find it hard to let go of anything, anything at all. Now, my dad was not hoarder level. I don't think he held on to garbage or anything, but he did have trouble letting go of almost anything. I remember once he told me that he was the person that things came to, and it was just really hard to let anything go. Now, I think that if he were maybe to really dive deep, he might recognize that everybody has things handed to them because people generally feel guilty decluttering and they feel better if they can give it to somebody else. Let me know if you can relate to this, if you have done this, if you have felt this way or if people have given you stuff. Now, once he actually told me how hard it was to declutter a ladle, but when he had to let it go, he was actually so proud of himself, which I think is good. Like, what did that mean? What are you sacrificing when you can't let anything go? It goes deep and sometimes professional help is a good idea but no matter what, you are sacrificing something. So what are you sacrificing if you choose not to sacrifice the clutter? By choosing to keep the clutter, the things that you don't use, that aren't serving you and are more than likely adding to your stress, what are you sacrificing? I once said to my dad that it seems hazardous to keep everything around you so you can hang on to every memory and sacrifice your present. And that really struck him. You are choosing not to be happy. Not everything you let go of feels great to let go of, but not every decision you make is an easy one. Some are, which is good. Not every decision is a happy one, making the choice. I really, really want to impress on you how important it is to make the choice to choose your life over all of your memories. You need to choose your future over your past. It is very hard for some people to let go of the past, but you need to recognize, you need to face the fact that life is moving and you want to enjoy all of it, don't you? You don't want to just spend all of your time living in the past. Don't sacrifice your happiness for some things, even if they are sentimental things. I mean, keep some things for sure. Keep the things that matter, keep the treasures. The great Peter Walsh describes treasures as all of your treasures together can fit on your dining room table. So for some people, that's not a lot of treasures, but don't keep the clutter. Now I did some deep decluttering under my stairs in the summer right here. Click this video. This is from my childhood, from when my parents were younger, from when my kids were younger. I think you will really like it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.